All right, this is part two of our lecture series on multiplexers. We're going to talk about how to represent multiplexers, two to one multiplexers in different ways with using Verilog. Right, so we're going to, actually there's a slide on how to do this with a gate primitive method and a bitwise operator. This is more what we call a structural method in terms of us specifying the gates we want. We'll take a look at how to do it with continuous assignment, case statement, if statement, probably not the ternary conditional operator. Uh, these are going to be behavioral methods. Right, we'll talk about the differences when we get there. But we can then specify Verilog with gate primitives. Right? Uh, this particular semester, spring 2020, we've not been working with the gate primitives. When we write a Verilog module, Right, we start with the keyword module, we give it a name, we have the port list. So in green here are some comments I've got to uh, tell you a little bit about the purpose of each one of these. Right? And when you work with gate primitive modules, I've got a picture of the circuit right here. You actually then create an instance of that module. So a gate primitive, a Verilog gate primitive for a NOT gate, starts with the word NOT. You have to give it a unique instance name, follow the identifier naming rules, in this case, I just called it N1, or not gate one. And whenever you work with the gate primitives, the first signal in the list is always the name of the output. So the output from this not gate will be called S not. The input is S. And you can see here in the uh, schematic, I've labeled the wires with the, the signal names that I'm using in the Verilog module to give you an idea of what wire that is. Right? So that's how we're generating S not. The first AND gate, then, that connection requires an input of S0 and with I0. So here, this AND gate, here's our input S0, here's our input I0. The output of that gate is labeled A0. Similarly, this particular AND gate, this instance 2 AND gate, its output is A1. Its inputs are S and with I1. We can see, then, that all of that flows into an OR gate, right? And so the two signals, the input signals for the OR gate are A0 and A1. The output signal from the OR gate is M. And within the module then, I've had to declare these signals that I'm working with, S0, A0, A1. Right. These are internal to the module. They're not part of the port list. They're, only need in, they're needed internally to actually create the circuit that we want. Right. The only things we need in the port list are those connections to the outside world, our select, our input lines, and our output line. Now, if we were then to um, put this into some soft, um, like the Cordis IDE or other software that could synthesize the Verilog hardware, we take a look at the hardware that it actually synthesizes, right? Because it converts a computer language or an English-like description, a software description, into real hardware, right? Well, not surprisingly, it gives us two AND gates and OR gate, and this bubble here is the NOT gate. So it gives us then the same gates. And we would expect that with gate primitives. Right. If we take a look at how to do this with bitwise operators, well, we've been working with bitwise operators, and we know that we basically just write the Boolean expression that we create. So here's our Boolean expression, our continuous assignment statement keyword assign. We're going to assign to the output signal named M. So this equal sign is the assignment operator. We're going to assign the result of not S and with I0 that expression or with S and with I1, right? That's our Boolean expression, right? Everything here is the same. Uh, we've got our inputs and our outputs, All right? We don't need any internal signal declarations for this one. When we go ahead and synthesize this hardware, it gives us the same thing, right? Two AND gates, an OR gate, and a NOT gate. Now, right? When we work with bitwise operators, when we have single bit expressions like this, we are generally always going to get these same gates that we're specifying. When you work with more complex signals that might be multiple bits, you may get something other than the logic gates here that you're specifying. It may synthesize into something else. Uh, but for our use in this course, we should always see it synthesizing into those particular gates. All right, so that wasn't a surprise on either one of those. Let's take a look at a different way of specifying this. So before we had a Boolean expression, here, right, we've got our module, I just named it MUX. 
instead of having the signals I0 and I1, I called the input lines data underscore in as the select M is the output. So the data lines, then I specify with a size one down to zero so that we have two. And we can refer to data in at index zero and data in at index one. We want to use the individual wires, right? Our other signals are one bit, right? By default, when you declare something of type wire, it's one bit, right? Here, we still have this continuous assignment statement. We want to assign to the output M data in we use the square brackets to refer to which one of those bits we want. Well, here we have the signal S. And what this is saying then, right, is when S is a zero, this will give us on the output whatever data in zero is. When S is a one, we're going to get whatever's on data line, input line one, right? Uh, so that, we didn't even have to write a Boolean expression for that, simply because if we, knowing something a little about Verilog, right, we, could write this expression. Now, if you're new to Verilog, you wouldn't necessarily know you could write this. If you've been writing software programming and you work with arrays, you probably have an understanding of the syntax or uh, of the index notation. All right, let's see what kind of hardware this gives us. Right. This gives us a decoder and a multiplexer. Right. Well, we have a separate lecture on decoders, right? so you may not know what a decoder is yet. But it didn't give us AND gates and OR gates, right? It gave us a decoder and then a multiplexer, right? And what you may not know then is in Quartus and other um, libraries, there, there are hardware resources already built for you. So there are library modules for decoders, multiplexers, flip-flops, latches, several other circuits. Right, that you, you don't necessarily want to build every time yourself. Of course, for us, we're building a MUX. Right, so that was, might be a little bit of a surprise there. All right, let's go on then. All right, now we're getting into some other behavioral Verilog and we're going to work with something called a case statement. All right. And so our Verilog is going to look the same. Right? We've got our mar module, our port list. I'll talk about why we have this new type in a bit. We have an assignment operator, talk about that. Here's the new stuff in here. Let's start here. When we say behavioral Verilog, that means we're going to write code that's more like software programming code that describes the behavior of the circuit. We don't necessarily need Boolean expressions. When we do that, behavioral Verilog is characterized by this always block. And the behavioral code goes inside the always block. So keyword always, always at. In here in parentheses, we have what's called a sensitivity list. And what goes into the sensitivity list depends on the code that you have inside this particular block. What we have in this block is code that specifies what the circuit output should be. And the output, that the output is going to be sensitive to any changes in the select signal. It's sensitive to what's on the data input lines. So we have all three of these inputs here in this sensitivity list, right? You can start then and always block with a keyword begin, end it with end, right? That tells the Verilog, start of the block, end of the block. Uh, a lot of times you'll see this indented in this case, for some reason this indent is larger than normal. Uh, it doesn't have to be indented. It usually makes things a little bit easier to read when things are indented when your code gets long. When, Short, it's easier to read. All right, in here we have what's called the case statement. So here in blue is the keyword case. In parentheses, we put the case we want to evaluate. So we want to evaluate the signal S. And what this code does that we write below is we tell Verilog, right, we state what we want to do when S is zero and when S is one. This syntax here, the one asterisk, well, one stands for the size or the number of bits. So this says the following number, so these numbers up to the right, is a one bit. And so you have to put the asterisk here as part of the syntax. B stands for the base binary. So it's saying that this number zero is encoded as a one bit binary zero. This says this number one is a one bit binary one. So what you do is then you put a colon after this, 
right? And so what this is saying is in the case when the select bit is at zero, our output that we're naming rmux, or the signal we've named rmux out, we want to assign to that i0. So again, this equal signs or assignment operators. When s is a one, this case is executed. The signal rmux, rmux out is assigned whatever values on i1. And that's the behavior we've described, right? When s is zero, channel zero is the output. When s is one, channel one is the output. Right. So this signal R mux out, there's a reason we don't have then our output wire down here. So what's in our port list for the output is named mux out. Here we have a signal that's of type reg. Actually, this should be in blue because this is a keyword in the Verilog language. We've been working with wire types. The other type that we can work with is reg. You can think of reg as usually forming some sort of internal memory resources that this particular module need, needs. We don't connect regs to the outside world. The reason we have to use a reg is when you write an always block. So inside an always block, the name of the signal, sorry, the data type of the signal that's on the left-hand side of an assignment statement, these equal signs are assignment statements. So this data type must be a reg type. It can't be a wire type. Left-hand side of assignment st statements, inside always block, must be a reg type. What goes on the right-hand side could be a reg type or a wire type or a numeric constant. Right. Then we have to connect the reg. We have to assign what's in the reg, this internal memory, to our output, our circuit output, our wire output. So whenever you have an always block and you want to connect then to the output, the wire output in the port list, you have to take the reg type and assign it to the wire type. And so these type of assignment statements that we've been using require that this signal on the left hand side of this assignment statement be a wire type. So this is called a continuous assignment statement when it uses the keyword assign uses the assignment operator. The signal here on the left must be of type wire. Signals on the right could be a wire, could be a reg, numeric constant. All right. So we will then start working on some examples in class. You'll see more examples of using always blocks. Right. So new syntax. Let's take a look at what this generated. All right. Again, very similar, exactly like the example before this, this generated a decoder and a multiplexer. All right, and here's what you should begin to learn. Case statements will always generate a decoder. You have to remember that when you're writing this programming language, this hardware description language, it's not so much a programming language as a hardware description language. We have to remember that we're describing hardware. And so we will then start to see that whenever we use a case statement, it's going to generate a decoder. All right, let's take a look now at another structure that we use within an always block called the if, right? If, else if. And so we have our module multiplexer. Here our inputs are I0, I1, and S. Right, our output, again, is mux out. We're going to use a reg type because we're going to be working with a signal that's inside an always block, right? And so inside the always block, always at, we have our sensitivity list here in parentheses. Uh, sometimes you can leave the parentheses off. Sometimes you'll see this written in different ways that will work. Uh, just go with the syntax for now. Go with one method you know that works. Stick with that for a while till you learn something else. All right, we have our begin and end here. And then we have this if statement. So this if is a keyword. And then here in parentheses is a comparison test. So this double equal sign is what we call a relational operator. And guess what that double equal sign makes? It makes an equality comparator. So double equals compares two signals to see if they're equal. So this says if s is equal to a one bit binary one. In other words, if s is one, then we want our output, we want this signal R mux out to be whatever's on line I1. Right. Else, right, if the signal's not one, 
So remember then the select can be zero or one, mutually exclusive cases. If it's not one, it must be zero by default. We just say else. So what happens is the way this executes is if this is true, so if this test is true, this line of code executes, the line of code in the else block does not execute. Code that's associated with an else block only executes when every other test above has been false. So when this test is false, in other words, if S is not equal to one, right, then this else code will execute. And that says in this case, assign the output to be I zero. Again, this R mux out is declared as a reg signal, right? One bit wide, it's a reg data type because whenever you use an assignment operator, single equal sign is an assignment operator. Whenever you use then an assignment operator inside an always block, left the signal on the left-hand side must be of type reg. Finally, we have to assign the reg to the wire type to connect them that to the outside world. All right, and then the hardware that it generates, surprise, is a MUX. Right? We described a multiplexer. So it uses a multiplexer that it has in its library. And so what we've learned then, and what you'll see is whenever you use if else statements, they will synthesize to multiplexers. Uh, there's another statement that's not commonly used. It's a form of an if statement that has this operator that looks like a question mark. We're not going to use it, so I'm not going to spend time on it. All right, uh, the next lecture we'll start covering about what happens when our input lines are greater than one bit wide. Uh, but what I'd like to show you is something in Quartus before we end this lecture. So let me pop up Quartus here. All right, let me. Drag this over. All right. All right. So this Verilog module that I have up right here is then our Boolean description, our bitwise operator module. And let's see, I'm going to make that the top level. Actually, I want to see the list of, oh, I don't have this associated with a project. I just have it open. Uh, so I'm going to right click. No, I used to be able to say add to project. I guess I can't. Well, it might be another IDE. Project, add current file to project. There we go. All right. This one was that block diagram that we saw. Probably just going to remove that file from my project. When I remove something from a project, I don't delete the file. It just takes it out of the project environment. All right, I'm going to set this as top level. I'm going to run analysis and th synthesis on it. Uh, no, I don't want to change whatever happened to that old file. All right, here's the one we're working with. We're run waiting for analysis and synthesis to run. What I want to show you is how to find then the, oh, hardware that it synthesizes. And this is being particularly slow for whatever reason. Okay, good, it's done, no errors. All right, so after you run analysis and synthesis, remember synthesis is the step, right, that determines what hardware to use to actually create the circuit. You can go to the tools menu. You wanna to come down to Netlist, Netlist viewers, RTL viewer. Uh, no, I don't wanna say that. And so that shows you, right, uh, the register transfer level, RTL viewer, shows you then the hardware that it used. And so for our bitwise operators, you can see it used two AND gates, an OR gate, and there's our NOT gate there. Right? And that will work then, right, on any of the other modules that we have. Here's the, right, here's the if statement one, if I were to, go to project and say add current file to project. And I'm going to say make this the top level. Let's go ahead and run analysis and synthesis on it. Now while that runs, 
I'm just gonna close that for now. All right. Let's wait for this to run. Uh, this should be a one bit binary one. All right, that is complete. So we go to tools, Netlist viewers, RTL viewer. And then we can see it's using a multiplexer that it had it in library. We've got the select input. Right uh, here, we've got our input lines and our mocks out. All right, so that's how you can see what hardware is being synthesized. So as you begin to write Verilog, I find it interesting to come in here and see what it does with my description, with the hardware language description, what kind of hardware it actually makes. Right, uh, most of the time when we start writing, well, I shouldn't say most of the time, we should when we start writing complex Verilog, we need to have an idea of what hardware it's going to make. Often we usually physically sketch out, uh, in general, the hardware we think is going to make and the control flow, uh, at least in, in this course. Right? But as you're just learning this, these forms of the language, you would really have no idea what sort of hardware it would make. So for us, at this point, it's going to be write some code, see what, the, what hardware it actually makes. Have an idea of what the hardware does, of course. All right, so that's it then for part two of the lecture. Like I said, the next lecture, we will begin talking about data bus lines. Thanks for watching. Hope you learned something.